people who learn this okay <clears throat> now i happen to see a lot of uh, technical profile um, and in one of the profiles or few of the profiles have noticed people mention in their languages right the language is known that's a section they have in the in the social networking for professionals and they mention like let's say um, english hindi and java okay to me this is not right okay because when we talk about programming language no matter how comfortable we are even if we work every day since last 20 years in java it's still not my language because i cannot communicate with the java to any other human being right so the programming language is different from the language we speak okay so it is a language for computer so what happens behind the scene when we write programming language it seems similar to english because then it is human readable okay so when you say that uh, print hello world we can easily identify if we come from the python um, learning background that we are essentially uh, saying that we need to print hello world okay that's what how human reads but machine don't read in that way in computer world it gets converted into binaries zeros and ones and then it becomes something which is very native to the programming of the computer and that is known as machine language and if we happen to see the machine language um, which gets converted right no one here will be able to read that so it is only computer which understands that so that's why there is a there is a intermediate thing which happens with any programming language what we call as compiler now the role of compiler is like um, sort of like a translator that component which is part of the programming language translates that human readable format of a programming language into a machine readable machine language and hence machine can start execute it or then start interpret that right so that's what the in compiler plays a critical role when we talk about programming language like java like python or c++ there is always a compiler part and parcel of the the programming language and that's why we need to install the programming language in our machine so all of us have done that for python so all of us have installed python uh, through python.org and that installed not only the libraries which we'll be using i'll talk about it later what is library but it also installs a main majorly important component like compiler which translates that human readable format of the programming language into machine language and then machine can start now what happens if you write a java program or c++ program uh, which gives you the same output like hello world it prints the hello world in the screen they all get converted into machine readable format at the end of the day so that's what the the heavy lifting is done by compiler in earlier days in earlier time of the of the computer science people used to write machine languages by themselves okay so there are only handful of uh, programmers available in the world who used to write machine languages and i have had a book huh, so about the machine languages from uh, from 70s and 80s where the syntax was given how to write that and all these things is very very difficult complicated and it is uh, today's scenario quite undoable because we actually have lost the patience of learning so much into deep into programming language right so that's the bit of background why programming language is different from human language and we should not write along with hindi english bengali etc the programming at java or c++ or python as the languages we know because it is not uh, the right thing to do right so it is not something which is smart thing to do right? it looks cool but it's not smart uh, so this is what the bit background of this now what we have seen from yesterday uh, after doing this installation and fixing some of your machines is that we have a python in our local machine and when you have python in your local machine you tend to check it by either using python 
So if you say Python and enter, some of your, your machine, it will work. Some machine, it might not work depending on how the installation has been done. So there are a couple of different command by which this prompt comes. Now you can see that three arrow is showing up with a blinking cursor. And this is known in the Python world called Python REPL. So what this Python REPL means, it's a playground for Python where you can test things. But it's not how you execute the actual Python code because it is generally a single line of sort of thing you do. So we have tested like this. So we said that, hey, you want to say print hello and then you entered and hello printed. Now it REPL again waiting for me to give another input so I can do a simple mathematical calculation in Python and it gives me the output as three. So on and so forth. But you see that it is only during the, the session of this. Now to come out of that, you just say exit and you stay in the same command prompt. If you close it, it goes off. Uh, so it does both the thing. So you see that Python REPL is not the way to write code. Now what is the way to write code? The way to write code is to put it in a file so that we can come back later point in time and edit it. It is like writing an article. So when you write an article, you write it in Word. Okay, You don't put it in, in the browser text box and don't save it because you may want to work it for a longer period of time. An article never gets produced in a day or, or a few hours. right? So if it is a serious article you are writing, so you generally put spend a lot of time visiting, revisiting, editing, re-editing, and all these things. So we need a file. Now in Python, the file extension is .py. That's the general convention. So in Windows, I can say that notepad. And then I say that um, my, let me create a folder. OK, so let's say mkdir y16 April. So the directory gets created. All right. So let me create a new file over here. So I'll say notepad first dot py. Okay, that's a file. Now the notepad pops up in the others window. So let me just bring it up over here okay and then you can see that the i'll just increase the font size now the same thing which i was doing earlier if i say print hello this is just a test if everything is working fine and i go ahead and save this file that's it and this is what I was referring to as a human readable, right? It's not like your typical language as English, but you know what instruction you are trying to give. So computer ex expects you to send set of instructions. This is one of the instructions to the computer for us to really print hello. Now to execute this in a Python kind of world, we use Python space the fi file name we created. So that's why the Python gets executed. Now you can see that it is printing hello and coming out of that. Now if you keep editing this file, let's say you have this line and you say that you print it, let's say four times, as simple as that. And you save it, execute it, and you will find that four times the hello is getting printed. Now you understand that this is staying with you, the file, and you can come back later point in time and keep adding things uh, removing things, modifying things, and the file will with, be with you. And that's how the Python is created. All the programming within Python is created in a file. We never write it in REPL. So REPL is just to test things, that your machine is working, if the installation is correct, everything is fine, and then you just come out and forget about the REPL. Now we'll use this format of doing things, but now onwards, what we will do, we will move to an editor, right? Instead of writing it in a notepad, which we can do for, let's say, normal article writing, because notepad is a text editor, but what it lacks is the formatting. So in notepad, typically, you can't do formatting, uh, multi-formatting within a single text. So you can make increase the font size, 
you can um, make it italics, but you can't do a rich formatting. So we always use something like Windows Word to do that. Now, in the context of this kind of formatting, what we need is an editor for programming language or scripting. And the editor which we will be using is the code, Visual Studio Code. So what we can do, we can open Visual Studio Code from the machine and then point to this folder, the folder I created that is Pi 16 April. So let me do that. So if I just type code uh, in my search box and it will open the Visual Studio Code if it is installed. Otherwise, there is another option. From here, you can say code space dot. If you use this, it opens this folder by default for you. Okay, so you basically multiple tasks are done for you automatically. So it opens not only the Visual Studio Code, it opens the Visual Studio Code for that folder and it prompts me to say trust this author. And I say that you can see that now this Visual Studio has got uh, the folder Pi 16 April showing up. Okay. Now, if I go ahead and change the color theme to light so that it gets visible to all of you, which is good for presentation but not good for individual use. Okay. So it's very bright to my eyes. Now, if I go ahead and then click on the first dot pi, you see that I have that uh, hello, 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 all showing up fine. Right, so I can edit it and it has got nice different colors. And if I do a mistake over here, uh, it can tell me also sometime, it tells me that there is something wrong here. Right now it is not telling because I don't have linting installed. So however, in the Python world, you can install a lot of extension in the Visual Studio Code, which can tell you that, hey, we don't recognize this function. Are you trying to write this? So something like which you know much before, you try to compile and execute the code. So this is how this um, thing works. Now, if you, let's say, take this same example and let me see if I can increase the font size. I'm just trying to See the font size if I can increase that. Is the, the, the font clearly visible to all of you? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so let me also, because it's just trying to load some of the extension which has got a missing component and hence it is a bit busy. But let me try doing the zoom one more time.
Okay, so there, there's, it's a bit busy, but let me try continue with running, running that. Now, what I can do, I can continue to edit the file here, go back to my command prompt and keep running. Now, Visual Studio Code does give you uh, the integrated experience, okay? That means you can run the command from the same window. So if you say, go to terminal, and if you say new terminal, what happens, it opens the same command prompt, which I was trying to open earlier. Now you can see that it basically does show the command prompt at the bottom of the screen. Here, I can simply type the same thing with the file name. And if I type so, it gives me the same output like hello. Okay, so I don't have to switch between the windows. I continue to use this file so I can hide this uh, thing and then it becomes a bit much bigger. Now what I'm trying to do is that I'm trying to run a couple of print, but this time I'll say uh, hello Python. Hello world. Now you can see that I have got a couple of things which I'm trying to print. Uh, if I run this again, it prints three lines with the with the thing I wanted to print. Now this is one way of doing things, right? Write everything on your own, and then find that it is it is doing, let's say, the way you want to do. Now in programming language, when we give instruction, right? Uh, and if you let's say want to print the hello Python again, what you essentially need to do is that you need to do call the same thing. Now, if there is a typo or spelling mistake, let's say Python 2, it does reflect all the places wherever you have created that. So maybe you have one right, one wrong, but the, the whole idea is that you need to do the things which is kind of redundant. Now, in programming language, which is anything which is redundant can be reduced in a different way. And that's what we will be discussing now. I wanted to give you that um, sense why we are approaching towards that thing. Now, instead of me using the, the text within the double quote, what I can use, I can use a concept called variable. Now, what is variable? Think of it like a box, and inside the box, you have some content, and you move the box whenever you want to move the box, and the content moves along with the box. Okay? A variable is like that. So variable is a box which has got some data, okay? And that data could be a message uh, that is some text or could be some numbers or could be something else. Let us try to create the variable. In Python, you, you can create a variable with just a name and equal sign. And, and in the right-hand side, you type the message, okay? So if you say that, this is my variable. Now what happens, the right side, that is double quote, gets assigned to the left side, that is message. Now this is your identifier. It's like roll number of a student, okay, or registration number of, a, of an exam uh, candidate. And you give the registration number, everything about you gets pulled up, right? So it is basically the, the pointer to your data, or let's say a unique identifier to your data. And it could be one, field that is message with a variable. It could be multiple field like name, first name, last name, email address, phone number address, um, where do you study or work, etc. So this is how the variable really works. So it's a, it's a box for data. So you store the data within a variable. Now the benefit is that whenever I need to print it, I don't have to type the whole thing. I can say that print me the message which I have declared before. And that's how the Python variable declaration really works. And variable is so important in, thing in programming language that every programming language begins with variable. So it starts with what are the different kind of variables you can create and how do you create them? Because that's what you will be doing throughout the programming. You will be writing in that specific programming language. So you see that I try to do these things quite frequently, right? So now I can also use another type of variable that's a num1 which is 10 and i can say num2 which is 
2. Now, I did not use the, the double quote here while assigning this num1 and num2. And that's how the Python identifies that they are numericals. Okay, they are not individual, let's say, characters, but they are numericals. So it identifies 1, 0 as 10 and 2 as number 2. Right? Now, if I want to print them, okay, now what I can do, I can print num1, num2. I can say num1 and I can say num2. Now, another quick tip here, whenever you don't run, uh, need any line to be executed within the programming language for Python, you can omit that with a hash sign or pound sign at the beginning of the line. Okay, uh, So you can see that it becomes uh, green in color, but in Notepad, you will not find the color difference. But that's why the Visual Studio code is really telling you that this is um, this is there, but it will not get executed. So if I now run this, you will find only num1 and num2 getting printed. Okay, so this is how now. Now let's say this is just about printing the num1 and num2. Now how about if I want um, uh, this num1 and num2 to be calculated in a simple mathematical calculation kind of scenario. So if I say print num1 plus num2 if i say so let me see what output it gives it gives me 10 2 and 12 okay 12 is coming from the third print now all these things you can do and then if you want to retain the result of this num1 and num2 you can always create a variable called uh, and variable can be declared and at any place within the programming language construct so i'll say result and then I say num1 and num2. Now, instead of me typing the num1 plus num2 within the print, I use the variable which holds the output of num1 and num2. Now, I'll tell you why this output should be kept in a variable, not in a, a floating format, because the num1 and num2 at that given point in time might have a result, but we might change the num1 and num2 later point in time. Just to give you an idea, if I say num1, I can change num1 to 200. Now what happens when you print this, you get this 10, 2, and 12, but not the 200 because I changed it after the result. Now just, just after the result, okay, if I type this and if I do this, now what happens? Let me break it in pieces. So what I have done is that I have this calculation and then change the value, then print the result. So what will the line number 12 really give me is number 12 because then it has value of 10 and 2. But line number 15 will give me 202 because the num1 in the meantime has got changed its values. So a box can be opened and can, things can be replaced within the box. Okay, that's what I mean to say. Now what happens is that if you run this, you see that 10 and 2 are getting printed from the previous print commands and the result is showing 12 and 202. Just to avoid the confusion, let me hide these two lines and then you will see the result is coming as 12 and 202. Now you can see that during the course of the whole file, I can keep changing the value of a variable with different kind of values and then my uh, result variable will only show me when that calculation has happened okay so it doesn't really reflect on the latest but it reflects on the do on the line of my uh, file where the result was written so that's what important aspect of a variable is so the placeholder matters where if you change the value of the placeholder or the variable, it changes only when you recalculate that, okay? Otherwise, it will not have. So there are a, there are a few concepts in programming language which says that um, take only the latest value of whatever that is and calculate it. So you take a different approach, different algorithm has to be written for that 
but in a nutshell, yeah, pro, the variable is fairly simple. Now, I wanted to also touch base on a few other things about variable. Now, what I wanted to show you is that I have been using this num1, num2, and the message. Okay. Now, let me hide these things. Okay. And then I go into that. And I want to see what is this uh, variable is all about. Now, there is a function in Python called type of. Okay, so if I say type of, so it's not showing me. Let me just quickly check what is missing here. Let me quickly check. If I just let me try that type of message, what does it say? Okay, so let me increase the size here and leave the other num two. Let me copy this and print here so what i'm trying to do is that i'm trying to use an internal python function which identifies what this variable really holds what kind of data that variable holds now if i run this code you can see that we have three variables, message, num1, num2, and they basically show you that str stands for string. Okay, string is pure text. So you have that string in Python. Int is integer in Python, and second one is obviously an integer. Now, if I put, let's say, 2.0, you can also put 2.5 or any decimal value, and then if we run, then the last one, changes to float float is decimal in python so if you have a decimal number it becomes float now you can have a plus minus in integers so you can that's why you can do that and python is pretty pretty efficient for doing the mathematical calculation so you can pretty much think of anything which you can do in mathematics can be implemented in python and python is designed for scientific calculation so you have all those things which is in built into the system now you see that uh, the the value which basically shows you the type of the variable it doesn't tell you the value okay so we are just trying to analyze what are the different types we can create now what i also wanted to tell you that i can use this double quote to declare a variable now the moment i wrap the uh, the variable value uh, inside a double quote it becomes simple text now you can see that is that the first two variable type is string, string, and float. That means the second one is also string. So what happens when you have this, let's say, variable like this, uh, message and num1, and you apply the plus calculation. So if I say that print and message plus. Now, we have done plus with um, numbers, and that does your mathematical calculation. But if you use this plus with, let's say, pure string, then it joins them. It concatenates. Okay, in, in programming language, you call them concatenate. But it basically joins the two string together, and then it makes a single string. Okay, so this is the the type you get. 
Now, another quick thing I wanted to highlight as well here, when you have, let's say, a Python a code, and then you are doing a mathematical calculation for that. So let's say I go with this simple integer, integer type, and then I do a, a calculation with this print command, and I say that num2 divided by num1, or num2 and num1. So I divide num1 with num2. Now let me hide them. And if I execute this, what happens? The result comes with dot zero because Python assumes that when you do a division calculation, uh, it might contain fraction. So to be on the safer side, the internal algorithm of the programming language library, which is readable to us also, has got um, logic that it converts the the values, the integer values into float or a decimal and does the calculation so that in case if you have a reminder or a decimal output, you can easily point because you cannot, let's say, have a variable as integer and then replace it with decimal or something on that line. So you basically have got this kind of uh, thing happening uh, internally within the Python and you don't have to think about it. So I'm doing a perfect division. So if I do it with let's say three and it will have this something like this coming up as my result because it is a float so the output type definitely would be float and now just to show you what this type looks like and as you all know when it comes as uh, with a point it is float now i can put it in a result and i can just say that type result instead of just typing the output i print the type of the result. Now what happens when this shows up, it shows the type as float. But my num1, num2 are both integers. Okay, so that's how the variable really works in Python. So which means that in Python, it is safe to do the calculation. And that's why it is basically very easy to play around with Python with mathematical calculation because Python is designed by uh, designed by people who used to do a lot of scientific calculation. So they made it for themselves. Let's put it that way. So it's a general purpose programming language, but it's a very strong library for mathematical calculation, including statistics and um, data science. So you will see nowadays people do call out that data science uh, and all this um, artificial intelligence and all of this stuff it is they are nothing but the computer algorithm and you use them to do some uh, complex decision making a uh, lot of complex statistical uh, calculations can be done using python and they are possible because you have got libraries you don't have to write them from scratch so they're already written for you so if you want to do a uh, mean uh, of, a, of a statistical method you will get a mean function available and then you can just supply it with your data and you get the mean. So you don't have to do those calculations step by step. So they are all done for us. So we have seen that the same plus sign changes depending on the variable value. Now I want to also play around with it uh, and then show you a little bit of, let's say, twist here. So if I happen to use message plus num1 now let's see what happens in the output now you remember that we have got the message as a variable text and num1 as a variable type integer and hence the python is unable to identify what we are trying to do so they simply throws an error and this is what the error in programming language tells you so it tells that you can't really do sometimes this they are very explicit sometimes they're not they're kind of very vague so you have to interpret them on on from your experience what this is trying to tell now in this step it is trying to tell that you cannot do this plus with two different kinds of variable they have to be the same type okay so either string or integer or float both of them has to be in the same type so you get an error if you try to do that so it is not always let's say happy path Sometimes you get these errors 
in in this kind of thing now what i'm trying to also also do over here is that show you a couple of different data types right so we have string integer float and then another very important data type which we'll be using later point in time is boolean huh? true or false so let's say i have a, i use this variable bool and i say true okay and you can see that it becomes a blue in color and if i just say the variable type as bool and then print it will simply print the text true so if i run this the true comes up it's not a double quote true okay just to prove the point i can say type of bool and you see that it's type bool so i just declare the variable with the keyword but it should not be doing that but you see get the idea right it's not integer it's not string it's not float it is another type boolean so it has only two value binary zero and one uh, or true or false so whichever way you want to call it so i can um, actually get the get the thing so this is mainly written uh, to to let's say do the do the logical calculation and we will will probably play with it later point in time so how to do things uh, there now <clears throat> now i wanted to also talk about a um, few other things uh, in string so string is a very rich data type so let me clear this thing up okay it's a very rich data type now you have seen that i have tried to print hello world now let me also reduce the size of this variable so that i can type it quickly so i gave a name of s it's not very explicit when you read later point in time you don't understand what that s means so you need to make it more readable but for the sake of uh, quick typing i have changed it to x now you see that it has a capital um, um, title uh, character which means that every word important word in this whole text starts with capital letter right so that's what we call is title character so now i want to convert all of them into uppercase okay so if you use the direct print or result let's reuse result and then you convert this into upper you can do it using one of the existing built-in functions so that is upper so if you use this function now what happens the whole thing becomes capital now let me show you that so if i say so and if i run this you will find let me just I am not type printing the result. Okay, so I let me print the result again. It will be in uppercase. Now, it is unusually slow in my machine. I don't know why, but you get the essence. Like the hello uh, variable now has become full uppercase, right? All of them, like Telegram. We used to do Telegram in all uppercases. So this is what it looks like. Now you can also do the same thing as upper search exists. You can do a lower, which means that it big all of them will become lowercase, which means all of them will be like this. Okay, so you can convert them. Now you can also do a little fun with it by using another type of function, built-in function called swap case. Now, as the name suggests the upper one will become small and small one will become upper okay it will just swap the cases so you can do that by just calling this now you can see that since h was uh, capital it becomes small and rest of them became capital letters and same with the variable so you see the see the power of built-in function you don't have to write multiple lines of logic 
complex logic to do all this uh, simple, let's say, mundane work kind of work where you have to convert it into all uppercase. It's probably 10,000 times, uh, 20,000 people might have done that. So why do, do redo the same algorithm? So let the programming language take care of the basic algorithm and then give you a function, okay? And that is the function which we are using, which is lower and upper or swap case. And that is where uh, the real power of programming language really lies with. So you have the compiler and you have the set of most frequently used functions which are being used very frequently in programming language. So it generally doesn't come on the day one, all of them. They uh, get added to the programming language installer because of many people using, contributing and all these things. And that's how the open source really works um, in, in the sense. So you have this function concept um, which uh, really comes up and then shows you thing into into that. So basically you have got uh, many different function which you can use in your programming language to build this kind of thing, right? So you have this hello variable, right? And I am trying, trying to, to see how it works. I just added a few things here. Now I use another function that is title. If I say so, you can see that the whole sentence, though the second part of the sentence was written all small, became capital. So it did not touch what is right. So hello variable was already in title case. That means every word and its first letter is capital, but the second part really changed because it was not having that thing. So it basically um, does all the heavy lifting for us uh, and then makes things work. Now, <clears throat> what I wanted to also talk about in this kind of uh, string is that string is, let's say, set of, um, set of um, uh, characters placed one after another. So you see that, hello, it is basically H-E-L-L-O, okay? How you write using pen and paper, that's the same thing. But in programming language, the placement really matters and to calculate the placement, because it's all computer, not human brain, they don't act like us, we have to tell what do we want to do. So every character has its position. Now in programming language, the position starts with zero. So the first letter of the, your string H is placed in the zeroth position. That's how we calculate the index or the po position of your let's say character of the character within the variable. So if you, I want to, let's say, read out the first letter of the whole sentence, I can use an index mechanism to pick up that. Now to do that, you use this kind of syntax, okay? Square bracket, and then you place the number. So if you place zero, now the result will show you the first letter of your X, that is H. Now, zero is the beginning of what you try to do. Now, if you, let's say, happen to try with one, you definitely would get E, okay, as the output. Now, you can see that I can point to anything like 10, and it will give me the 10th letter of the, of the whole thing. Now, I can keep adding things, and then I can say that I want to read the 100th position of the string and then it shows me an error because there is not enough uh, let's say index available so it is out of bound or out of range kind of error so you also need to test what is the whole length of the the variable and then print so to to do that 
you can use a function called len. So len is a function to check the length of. So if you have a large um, set of values, you don't have to manually uh, calculate them. What you can do, you can just simply use len and then it shows you the number of characters, including the space and dots and everything you put. So it has got the consideration for space and dots also because they are also characters for computer. So you see that I'm getting 15 characters, but actually I'm not having 15 letters. OK, but I can use this 15 position to get my, um, let's say, the, the letter. So if I use 15, now let's see what happens if I use 15. That will be an interesting test. So it gives me a length 15 and I try to use 15 as my um, position of the letter and I run, I still get index out of range error. Why? Because when you do calculate the length, it starts with one. So the first letter H is the one. If I have only H in S, the length will be one. Okay, let's put it that simple. So the length is the actual number of characters. Now, when you do the indexing, it starts with zero. So it is always length minus one. So what we do is that we can use if I if someone says that show me the last character of the string. So you get the length. OK, and then you use this S square and do a little tweak that is len minus one. So this will give you the last character of the whole string, which is dot here. So I have a dot at the end of the string. So you'll find. Sorry, I don't, don't need this 15. I need this one. Len. So let me use this thing. So it, basically what I'm trying to do is that len let's say I say how many. So that is len. So this is means how many characters I have. So this is what I'm trying to do it here. So instead of that, I can use how many minus one and then you see that what I'm getting is that 15 minus one that is 14. So 14th letter is the last character. So let me try to do that. So you can see that dot is coming. So instead of dot if I put something like uh, big let's say X okay, and you will find the X will be coming as the last letter. So you don't have to calculate by yourself and hit, do a hit and try and see when the error comes and what was there before all those things. So you just simply do a little logic and that's how you build up your algorithm, right? So you um, calculate the whole length. You know that uh, if I use the whole length as my index, I'll definitely get index out of bound because that's one additional. So let's reduce it by one and I see the last character of the whole thing, right? And if you, let's say, use space before and after. So you have a space and you can have more spaces. So if the more spaces you put, the more uh, length it will be show. So if you say how many, which is basically length. And if you say this, you see that it shows 23 characters. OK, that's actually not 23 characters because there are spaces so i don't really need spaces all the time until unless it is between two words so you can see that it reduces but still have uh, spaces so i could get let's say an sms from a message from a from a system or a friend which might have spaces and i want to ignore them so we call it trim so trim or strip strip is the function in python but trim is the commonly used term which is basically means that reduce the space before and after. OK, so if you just see the length and then you use trim 
has a variable name and then use this s and then use a very function called strip now the trim will contain the the value of that now what i wanted to show you is that i wanted to print the first length and then second length so in this i will directly use sorry let me trim now i just want to do don't want to do things complex but i just wanted to print them so one first print with space and then we do the strip and then we have no space so you'll find the difference here so you'll see that first one it was 19 and then second one 15 so it automatically squeezes all the spaces before and after and made it let's say within this uh, thing right and i can also uh, replace a uh, thing for example i want to replace um, value so I'll say s dot replace hello I replace H with hello P so if I do that and I just use the stream variable to place it so that it gets printed now I print trim not the length And I execute this. Now what happens that you can see that with space, it replaces H with P. So wherever that has got H will be replaced. Just to give you an example, if I use a, a which it has got two places, V, A, and here, you will see that it will be replaced with P. Okay. So you can replace it programmatically. So if you know that there is a spelling mistake, in the text and then you want to probably replace a name with some identifiable number you can do that now a string as i said is is quite let's say complex and has got many features probably willing to continue that in our next class because they are very helpful going forward so with this i want to do uh, it's almost at the end of our class so i wanted to wrap it around and then if you have any question please feel free to ask me